Hi, this is Dr. Sandra K. Webster, and in this video I'm going to show you a different way to compute a one-way between subjects ANOVA using SPSS's univariate command rather than the one-way command. And there's one major reason I like to do this, and that's because the univariate command gives me a magnitude of effect, and I don't get that with the one-way. This is the data that we were using, and the hypothesis is basically that the number of connections you make between words will improve memory for those words. So strong nets had more connections than moderate nets, and those with minimal nets. And so this is the data that was used in the previous examples. Switching over to SPSS someplace here. This is what the data set looks like. I I uh, created it on the previous example. So I have my independent variable, and right now the value labels are showing. If I change the view, they're all coded 1, 2, and 3. And here is my dependent variable. These are numbers that could go from 0 to 12 because there were 12 words for memory in a set. This time I'm going to go to Analyze. And instead of using compare means, I'm going to the general linear model, and I'm choosing univariate. General linear model, univariate. And the dependent variable is memory. I have one independent variable. It is a fixed factor. So this is my independent variable. For now, we're not going to look at the rest of the options down here, because this is how we're doing a one factor between subjects analysis of variance. Under options, I have lots of options, and here's why I want to do this. There's the descriptive statistics, but I also want the estimates of effect size, because it's not enough to know that things are significantly different. We have to know how big the effect is. And so when I do that, I can do more things. I can also still do the post hoc that I did before. So nets is the independent variable. I'm going to do a Tukey test on it. And I can get a graph. This time my graph gives me more options. So once I add the variable, it's on the horizontal axis, I can change it to a bar chart and include error bars. 95% confidence intervals are very handy. So that's what I've done. And those are the things I've selected. I say OK. And the output window opens. Here's the design. There are three groups, each with 10 individuals. Here are the descriptive statistics, the means, and they are in the direction according to our hypothesis, but that doesn't tell us that they're significantly different. We have to look down at the test of between subjects effects. So if I look to the third row, I get the effect of nets. SPSS does some things that are a bit uh, repetitive here. So the corrected model, we can ignore that. But this is everything all together. Well, yes, it's significant if it's significant down here. This is the y-intercept. This is a general linear model. So they're doing analysis of variance to say the line of best fit. A line would have a y-intercept. For our purposes, this doesn't answer any of our questions either. So we're basically looking at this third line the degrees of freedom, 2 between 27 within, that's what you're going to report. The F, 7.2, I'm, so, I'm sorry, 7.124. The p-value, 2-tailed, 0 0.023. And here is what we didn't have before. So this partial eta squared is a measure of magnitude of effect. And roughly speaking, it's the proportion of variance in memory that can be explained by this factor, nets. And that's a fairly high proportion, about a third. The multiple comparisons look the same as they did with the one way. And so you can either look at the pairwise comparisons, or you can look at the summary here of the homogeneous subsets. Now, if we look down at our graph, it looks a little different than we saw with the one way. Uh, instead of just a line graph, I've asked for a bar chart. And I've got the 95% confidence intervals. They're not answering exactly the same question as the honestly significant difference test. This basically is saying, how likely is it that the real mean of minimal, given that we have 10 subjects, is this number? Well, it's 95% going to fit between those limits. And so it's not exactly the same as multiple comparisons, but it does help us to see uh, the overlap between the conditions. 
And that's another example of how to do a one-factor analysis of variance with SPSS.